be with the, the most gracious host, Brother Bobby Leonard, and a kind and generous and supportive group of people. I've never found uh, any better on the face of the earth. And I want to say on behalf of myself, and I'm sure for everyone uh, that has been here to enjoy the blessings of the Lord and partake of the bountifulness of the table yeah. that's been provided here four times a day. I want, to, I want the ladies and those men and everyone that has contributed to make this a success. Uh, I want you to know that I'm sure that we all want to say thank you from the depth of our heart. And I know that these meetings are not conducted uh, unless there is planning, unless there is a great uh, amount of labor expended, uh, sacrifice. Uh, these ladies, I'm sure, come here early in the morning to fix these breakfasts that we enjoy. I, I have a little meeting, not this size. I, uh, I'm not prepared for this size. I mean, uh, I'm prepared to, for the congregation, but not for the feeding. But uh, uh, we, uh, we thank God for Brother Bobby Leonard and for this great church. And thank you for all that you've done. And... Uh, your hospitality and your kindness and your rendering yourself to, to contribute to make this uh, these services such a blessing. We're living in uh, difficult times. Practicality dictates that all of us have swings. And I mean by that, that you're not always on the mountaintop. When I joke with you sometime inside, I may be deeply sorry. But I try not to let other people to carry my burden. Because there's some burdens you can help with, and there's some that you can't help with. Paul recognized that in the book of Galatians when he said uh, first he considered the fact that we ought to help bear one another's burdens. And then the next statement he made, every man must carry his own burden. It's a lack of manliness, a lack of development, a lack of stamina, a lack of strength, a lack of dependence on God to when uh, you fail to be a man. You carry your, your burden. Brother Thomas started these services out with a message on songs in the night. Thank God for those songs in the night. Now any of you preachers that's been along the way for a while, You've had those times. You may deny them, but they've been there. And let me say this: you're either you're either in winter time now, or you're headed towards it. So I don't know of a more practical message that I could bring this morning than to bring a, a message on winter time. I need encouraging sometimes. Many times we're beat down on every side. We hear the critics. We hear the fault finders and the gossipers. And we see the unresponsiveness of our people many times and our hearts are beat down. Many times I, I go to bed in sorrow and find difficult to find rest. Now, we've all been there. And let me say this. If God knows my heart this morning, 
I want to help you. I don't have any desire to hurt anyone. I want to help you. God's given me some experiences. Trying experiences. I'm not boasting, but I guess I've learned to live in difficulties. I trust somehow that I've learned to rest in Him. Oh, to rest in Him. Amen. When the trials of life are in compass, us, lean on Him. I found him to be the God of the winter time. I found him to be the God of spring. I found him to be the God of harvest. And whatever season it is, he's the God and the Lord over it. I know that. I want, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with us, uh, if you will, to begin uh, this morning. <clears throat> and they've been very gracious to give me 45 minutes uh, because they well know that uh, I don't preach in 10 minutes. In Genesis chapter 8, this is my verse that I'm going to, that I will use as my basis for the seasons. I won't talk to you this morning, of course, on the subject of wintertime. I brought this message at the Calvary Baptist Church at Coco, Florida. Seemingly, God was pleased to bless it to the hearts of a few. I don't know whether they're all or not. But let me say this. I do covet your prayers this morning because God blessed it then. Uh, I could embarrass God this morning in myself. Unless he helps me. I don't want to embarrass God. And say, Lord, uh, I'm going to say like David did, uh, uh, Lord God, uh, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And Lord God, if you don't anoint me with fresh oil this morning, I'll embarrass you. And God doesn't want to be embarrassed. And I don't even want to be embarrassed myself. All right. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. And the earth, and while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now notice that verse specifically states uh, and gives us an unending uh, course of seasons. Now I recognize that these seasons are those that we experience. Uh, I thought yesterday we had summer. I woke up this morning, I thought we had winter. And seasons do change. But listen, uh, what I want to do is to nail down the fact, not only physically, that which, that which is in the physical